Some stars are nearby and some are far, far away. We can't see the nearest star without a telescope. It is too faint. Who found this star and how do we know it is the nearest? Let's find out more about Robert Innes, the Franklin Adams Telescope and where this discovery was made 100 years ago. Robert Innes was born in Scotland and spent most of his early years in London where he got his first job as a wine merchant, although he was always very interested as an amateur astronomer in the computation of double star orbits and things like that. But his most famous discovery was in fact that of Proxima Centauri. The Johannesburg Observatory was the site for the first photographic survey of the southern sky as well as for studies of double stars and asteroids and is where the discovery was made. The Franklin Adams Telescope was mounted in a small shed that has since been demolished. The much bigger 26 inch telescope housed in the familiar dome later replaced it. Nearby this imposing home was built in 1904 for Robert, the first director of the observatory. It was designed by the famous South African architect Sir Herbert Baker and built of imported brick. The house was recently renovated inside and out and is now a museum. The ingle nook in the vestibule is an unusual feature. So this telescope spent most of its years in Johannesburg but uh, after the Second World War it was moved out to Toppy's Hook and there it was used for a number of years until um, it ceased to be really useful and so it's uh, sat there ever since. These are the holders for the photographic plates that were used in the telescope. The plates were the basis for all the discoveries and for the resulting sky atlas. Well, it was well known that Alpha Centauri was a nearby star and that it moves against the background of the more distant stars. So Innes believed there should be other stars similar to Alpha, but in more or less the same part of the sky. He repeated the 1910 sky survey in 1915 and looked for anything that had changed by putting the two glass plates together in a blink comparator. After a lot of very tedious looking, he managed to find a very faint star, now known as Proxima Centauri, which had moved a significant amount in those five years. Ian Glass has plotted the movement of Proxima against the background of the Milky Way over the past hundred years. In 500 years it moves an amount equal to the apparent diameter of the Moon, as we see it from Earth. Robert Innes discovered Proxima in 1915. The question then was how far away was the new star and was it perhaps closer to the Sun than Alpha Centauri? long considered to be the nearest star. Distances to the closest heavenly bodies are measured using the principle of parallax. These two photographs represent views from a left and a right eye. The golf ball appears to move relative to the stationary background. Think of this golf ball as the nearby star and distant stars the wall behind. Stellar measurements taken six months apart from Earth provide the base of a triangle for the measurement of angles. To put the difficulty the early pioneers faced into perspective, imagine measuring the angle subtended by this golf ball from a distance of about one kilometer using the crude instruments of 1915. The best measure we have today for the distance between the Sun and Proxima is 4.2 light years and Alpha is just a little further away. We have cause to celebrate the centenary of this discovery, a magnificent achievement done right here in South Africa. With the advanced instrumentation of Hubble and Hipparchos space telescopes, no closer star has yet been found. 
Are there planets in orbit around Proxima? Unlikely. But who knows?